Before you begin to watch this video, I'm going to ask that you go over to the first video that was posted and watch it. Because in that video, we gave an overview of what lead time is and what the key terms to remember are. Key terms and factors to remember are. So, in this video, I'll be doing lead time the other way. In this approach, the statement of fact sheet is different from the one in the previous video and the way we calculate the merge or dispatch is different from what we calculate in the previous video. However, the answer will be the same or similar when it is completed. It is also up to you to choose which method you are comfortable with. We will be doing the same question that was done in our previous video just to prove to you guys that regardless of the statement of fact sheet that you use and the method you use to calculate the merge or dispatch, the answers will be similar. Step 1. Calculating the time allowed. So the formula for calculating the time allowed is the amount of cargo to be loaded or discharged divided by the loading rate. So in this case, the amount of cargo to be loaded is 4,500 tons and the loading rate is 625. The answer that we got for that is 7.2 days. So we, from that we'll take the 7 days and we need to work out the hours and the minutes for the time allowed. So in doing so, to find the hours, we take the point 0.2 and multiply it by 24 and we got 4.8 hours. And to get the minutes, we multiply the 0 0.8 by 60 minutes and we got 7 days, 4 hours and 48 minutes. Step 2. Here we have the statement of fact sheets. We have the day, the date, the remarks, the time saved, and the time used. Below the time saved, you have the day, hours, and minutes. Below the time used, you have the day, hours, and minutes. All the information here is what was given in the instructions. So let's begin. On Friday, November 3rd, the vessel arrived 800 hours. Also, the vessel birthed 1,100 hours, but we have we cannot start to record late time as yet because the NOR was not yet tendered and accepted. On Saturday, November 4th, the NOR was tendered and accepted 800 hours, but the question states that the loading shall commence three hours after the NOR was tendered and accepted. Three hours after the NOR was tendered and accepted is 1100 hours. So that's when we start to calculate our lead time. We also have to consider that the next day is checks. So we stop working at 1800 hours. So we know that there's 1800 work hours in that day. So we did not work, we did not start calculating late time until 1100 hours. So that means that we did not, we saved some time there, we did not use 11 hours out of that 1800 hour day. So for the time saved, we'll put 11 hours. So to calculate the time used now, we subtract the 11 hours from the 1800 hours and that's how we got seven hours for the time used so the time saved is the time we did not use and the time used is the late time the only difference between this and the statement of fact sheet that was used in the late time part one video is that we can use this one to proof check or as a guide to make sure that we are calculating the late time correctly for example, we knew that there was 18 hours 
we knew that there were 18 work hours in the day and we save 11 and use 7. All we had to do, have to do now, is to add the time used, which is the 11, and the time saved, which is the 7, to account for the 1800 work hours in that day. Sunday is considered to be Shek, so let's move on to November 6. So usually we treat that day as a weather working day, which is 24 hours, because there was no record of any in interruptions throughout that day. However, it is the day after Shex and the question stated that we should start 800 hours after Shex. We did not work for 8 hours and therefore it is recorded as the time saved and the late time is 1600 hours but when you add the 2, the 8 and the 16 you will get 24 hours. So that accounts for the 24 hours in that day. For Tuesday, November 7, it is a weather working day. There was no interruptions on that day, so we record the time used as one day. Wednesday, November 8 is considered to be a weather working day, which is 24 hours. However, rain delayed operations for 2 hours and 30 minutes. So we did not we did not do any work we did not do any day time for two hours and 30 minutes so we subtract the two hours and 30 minutes from 24 and that's how we got 21 hours 30 minutes when you add the two hours and 30 minutes plus the 21 hours and 30 minutes you should get 24 hours now let's move on to thursday november 9 we should stop working at 1800 hours because the next day is a holiday so we know that there is 1800 work hours in that day and there is no recorded interruptions for that day so we use all 18 hours for a late time friday november 10 is recorded as checks so let's move on to saturday november 11. It's the day after checks, so we know that we should start working at 800 hours. And the day before checks, so we know that we should stop working at 1800 hours. So we already saved 8 hours out of that day. Plus the equipment broke down for 1 hour and 30 minutes. So when you add 8 hours to 1 hour and 30 minutes, you'll get 9 hours and 30 minutes. For time saved so now you're gonna subtract that 9 hours and 30 minutes from 1800 hours and you will get 8 hours and 30 minutes for lay time but when you add the 9 hours and 30 minutes the time saved and the 8 hours and 30 minutes from the time used you should get 1800 hours Sunday, November 12 is considered to be Shek. So let's move on to Monday, November 13. So it's a day after Shek. So we know that we're supposed to start at 800 hours. So we did not work for 8 hours already out of the day. There was no other interruption for the day. But we completed loading and trimming 1300 hours. So we know that there is 1300 work hours in that day. So we're going to subtract the 800 hours from the 1300 hours and we'll get 5 hours for the time used and 8 hours for the time saved. When you add the 8 plus the 5, you should get 13 hours. The next step is to add everything in the time used so what we got was one day 75 hours and 60 minutes so we need to break that down a little bit so here is how we calculate the time used step 3 calculate the time used so we set up a column with days hours and minutes and we put her one day 75 hours and 60 minutes so 60 minutes make one hour so we cross out the 60 minutes and put zero zero and put the one which represents the hour 
under the hours column so for that we got 76 hours right so first we found out how many days are in 76 hours so we divide the 76 by 24 and we got 3.17 so we use the 3 to represent the days and put it under the days column and got 4. Now we need to calculate the hours remaining. So we take the 0 0.17 from number 1 and multiply it by 24 and we got 4 hours. So the time used is equal to 4 days, 4 hours and 0 minutes. Step 4. Calculating dispatch or the merge. I underline this patch because we used less time than was allowed so we are supposed to be calculating this patch. So the first step is to find out how much less than the time allowed was used. So we subtract the time taken or the time used from the time allowed. The time allowed is 7 days, 4 hours and 48 minutes and the time used or the time taken is 4, hour, four days, 4 hours and 0 minutes. So when we subtract that, we get 3 days, 0 hours, and 48 minutes. So this patch will be calculated for 3 days, 0 hours, and 48 minutes. If you haven't watched our later part 1 video, please click the link in the description box to view it. Now, the reason why we will be calculating the 0 hours is because I would love for you guys to know what to do when you get a question with hours. So now let's move on to... The next step so we will be calculating for three days zero hours and 48 minutes so the daily dispatch rate is six hundred dollars so we need to find the hourly dispatch rate and the dispatch rate per minute so in doing so to find the hourly dispatch rate we divide the six hundred dollars by 24 and we got 25 dollars to so find the dispatch rate per minute, we divide the $25 by 60 and we got $0.42. Now that we have calculated the dispatch rate for the day, the hour and the minute, what we do now is to use those rates and multiply them by the time. So 600 multiplied by 3 gives us 1800. 25 multiplied by 0 gives us 0 and 42 cents multiplied by 48 gives us $20.16. When we add the $1,800, the $0 and the $20.16, we get $1,820.16 payable to the charterer.